We are in a very dangerous moment. You ain't seen nothing yet. Women are going to control their bodies. What is happening here? What is happening here? Woman's fundamental health decisions are her own to make. I am spitting mad over this. For as angry as Democrats are over today's decision, it is a political gift for the midterms. And finally, gives Democrats something to be talking about rather than playing defense on inflation. So it should come as no surprise that within minutes of the Supreme Court decision, out went the fundraising email. Quote, can you chip in $15 so we can win the midterms and finally codify reproductive rights into law? This is an email from Nancy Pelosi. Our only option is to marshal a response so historic, $100,000, 100,000 gifts before midnight that we defeat every anti-choice Republican that made this happen. Our politics producer, Lindsey Borma, uh, pointed out that the fine print of the email says the money goes to Pelosi's personal re-election campaign, but I digress. Lauren Wright is here. Steph Knight uh, is well. Lauren Wright, associate research scholar and lecturer in politics and public affairs at Princeton University. Steph Kite with Axios. Uh, ladies, good to see uh, both of you. Uh, indeed, Lauren, you and I have talked for six months, and every time you say nothing trumps the economy, it's the economy stupid for the midterms. Uh, can abortion not only motivate the base, which we know it will, can it swing persuadable suburban moms in Georgia, Missouri, thinking about Arizona Senate as well? Yeah, I mean, in a lot of these swing states, there is broad support for abortion in at least some cases. And just because the economy and gas prices will still probably be top of mind, that doesn't mean that a marginal shift in opinion that takes abortion from a back burner issue to the front of people's minds can't have a very meaningful impact. I mean, if you think about it, for voters in Georgia, for instance, for moderate voters that are in the midst of a Senate race. And, you know, when you have a constitutional protection of abortion uh, and Herschel Walker comes out and says, I'm for an all out ban, 0.0, .0 exceptions in all cases, that hits very differently when those protections are taken away. Or Ron Johnson in Wisconsin saying, I don't see what the big deal is. Women can just drive to Illinois. Um, those comments now uh, are sitting in a very different context for a lot of women voters and for a lot of moderate voters. Yeah, e excellent points on each one of those races. Uh, Steph, big picture, uh, Democrats have been really criticized by even moderates in their own party for focusing too much on student debt, police reform, trans rights, protections for dreamers, all these sort of luxury issues, if you will. Is there enough sort of shock in today for the entire Democratic apparatus to focus now only on abortion as this issue? I mean, I think we've already seen, you know, all the Democratic arms, Democratic operatives, Democrats in Congress, abortion rights advocates already kind of get behind this message. I think we're starting to see them focus on this as a key issue going into November. But of course, the question is whether they can keep the energy up through November, whether this will continue to be top of mind for voters when they go to the polls months from now. And, you know, I think the other thing that will be interesting to watch is whether it's equally as potent in every state, depending on how states act moving forward from here on their own state abortion laws and how that pans out. I think all of those are factors that will um, determine just how potent of an issue this is in November. Now, for, for, for as much as we are talking about Democrats, there, there's the mirror image of this of Republicans who are, are quite literally popping champagne corks. Uh, here's some members of Congress today. Take a listen. The right to life has been vindicated. The voiceless will finally have a voice. It's a victory for the sanctity of life. It will save countless innocent children. I'm, I'm really uh, glad to see that we have some good, solid, conservative justices that uh, believe in the sanctity of life. And hopefully this can be the, end, uh, the beginning to the end of abortion. Lauren, I thought our, our previous guest from Missouri made an incredible point, which was they put a constitutional ban in uh, for abortion in Missouri. Uh, and all of a sudden they thought uh, and people pro projected that the governor was going to lose and the Senate was going to become uh, suddenly up for grabs and on and on and on. And in fact, the governor, the Republican governor, won by a larger margin uh, than he won the first time. 
Sure. You know, there will be now, I think, an asymmetry politically on this issue that we haven't seen for some time. If you look at the content of some of the Republican arguments today, it's really interesting to me. It's about these technicalities and constitutional interpretation. And uh, on the on the left among Democrats, these are very visceral, emotional reactions. There's an anger there that more easily drives voters in most cases to the polls than when you've had this victory and it's something you've been working on for a long time and you just want your supporters to get out there to continue the fight. That's not as much of a motivating message on average, but that doesn't mean Republicans still don't have the advantage overall heading into the next few months. It, 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 it's, a, it's a great point, Steph, and I can just imagine how many Democrats now are really happy that they have the ability to be for something, which is for codifying abortion rights, rather than having to play defense on the economy. Well, I think we certainly are seeing Democrats use this as an opportunity to score political points, but of course, not to diminish the the genuine concern that a lot of Democrats have on this issue. Um, but we're certainly going to see them use this moving forward, um, looking at pushing for, you know, codifying abortion rights. But it'll be interesting to see how Republicans also try to leverage this issue. We're already hearing from Republicans saying that they're talking about looking at uh, abortion restrictions mm -hmm. at the federal level if they do end up taking over Congress in November. So we're also seeing them push that angle as well. Yeah, the, 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 more, the more political wins you get, sort of the more emboldened you become. Flip side for that, Steph, real quick, uh, I'm thinking about moderate Dems in places like Ohio uh, with the Senate race there. Is there any attempt by moderate Democrats who are trying to hold on to seats to say to the more progressive uh, and aggressive part of the Democratic Party, stop talking about abortion uh, up until the time of birth, stop talking about uh, abortion on demand and simply start talking about a much more narrow uh, part of abortion rights that we'll talk with Lauren in a minute, but the poll's way better. I think we'll certainly see some moderate Democrats take that stance. And I'm even thinking of, you know, the, the primary contest be for Congressman Henry Cuellar in South Texas, where he obviously has a very unique and different perspective on abortion as an issue than most Democrats in his party. And he was up against a more progressive candidate in the primary. And although it was very close, he managed to still win that primary. And I think that was an interesting takeaway, whether now that the, you know, whether the decision is official now, whether that changes things will be a question that we'll have to see. But I think we're gonna see some moderates, depending on their district, depending mm -hmm. on their state, potentially trying to take, uh, you know, maybe a more nuanced approach. But I think by and large, we are seeing Democrats on the same page on this. And yeah. I think they're, that their voters are on the same page as well. Yeah, for, for, for sure. The polarized sides of this, and the nuance is becoming lost as it often does. I, I want to go back real quick, Laura. And exit polling revealed that Supreme Court appointments were the most important factor for 21% of the electorate. Not a big point, but an important one. Trump won 56-41. Uh, back in 2016 for that electorate. Uh, does this turn more Democrats into single issue voters? Maybe not single issue voters, but certainly this issue, and we've seen even some new polling that came out, I think from Fox earlier today that said that um, abortion is an important issue for most people. It's still not the top issue, hmm. but again, it's it's notched up on people's radar and that's really important. I do think it's meaningful that if you look at Republicans who are focused on winning, they're not exactly popping champagne bottles all around. Um, they're being very careful with what they say in public. They know that they are not at an advantage politically with this issue. Um, you know, there's even some reporting from the New York Times earlier that indicated in private, former President Trump has said he thinks this is bad for Republicans. And indeed, Overall, yeah. uh, that is what the polling shows. It's so much better politically to be on be on the offense uh, than it is on the defense. Republicans now on defense over over this, and I think uh, Steph, you'd say the uh, Democrats now are on the offense. Ladies, uh, phenomenal conversation. You cannot think of uh, two people with uh, more probity on these issues. Thank you both. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.